detractor in its own right, just the sort of sense of history and, and warmth and somehow the signal about what the future might be like. It's extremely appealing. I keep thinking I should be an entrepreneur. I don't know whether it's too late, but I keep thinking <laughs> with all these wonderful activities and programs, I should be in the middle of all this. So, well, thank you, and, and good afternoon. So we launched in Penn State in 2015, an effort to uh, promote job creation and, uh, and to ensure career success for our students. It's our commitment to economic development within the state of Pennsylvania. And its success is basically connecting researchers with people who can help bring their discoveries to the marketplace. There were certainly some skeptics, I think. After all, being an entrepreneur is challenging, as the founder of Under Armour said, any self-respecting entrepreneur has borrowed money from their mother at some point. <laughs> we didn't quite borrow money from our mother, but we started out deliberately and with a, a vision, but took the first step. And with the support of faculty, local business, and government officials, and friends, and then Penn State has grown remarkably rapidly. Today, Penn State is proud to have opened 21 innovation hubs across the state of Pennsylvania, including the one we're dedicating today. I, I think it's just a wonderful statement of what our communities are like, and a wonderful statement of how we can take the intellectual property and energy of Penn State, connect it to community members, connect it to legislators, and do our best to promote economic development. One of the things I like is we didn't say, here's the model. Here's the cookie that we want you to cut. We see, said each and every one of these must reflect the uniqueness of their community. We should be a part of the community and do the things that make sense in our communities. Everybody shares a common mission to inspire and advance innovation and entrepreneurship, to help transform ideas into viable products, to drive things into the marketplace. But we expect, just like the communities of Pennsylvania, every lunchbox will be unique, every campus is unique. The impact in a short amount of time has been nothing short of Remarkable. So during our first reporting year, 2016-17, only five year, more than 2,500 faculty, staff, and students engaged in entrepreneurial activity. Hundreds of community entrepreneurs were supported. One of the foundations of this is we're not doing this just for our students, our faculty, and staff. We're doing this in partnership with the community, so our doors are open. And so I look at the fact that here you have a legal scholar coming down to give a workshop on protecting your IP, and this is open to everybody. This is uh, exactly what it takes, I think, with this partnership for us to truly be successful in this space. Eighty new products were developed in that first year. Seventy-nine startups from those five full-time launch boxes. And I got to tell you, I sat there in United Airlines, and I was reading the United Airlines magazine, and here was Case Western Reserve, a pretty good university, and it says over the last five years we've created more than 25 um, startups. And I thought to myself, well, 79 <laughs> in just year one, you know? This is just like a completely different feeling. And they took the time and trouble to put this in a magazine in, in United Airlines. Okay, there's another part of this which I just absolutely love. And part of the reason why I love it is because we didn't anticipate it. Our students, our community members, are hiring students. And so more than 100 internships occurred in that first year. This is incredibly important because this means that a student creating a company is... Um, deciding that there are other skill sets they need, other than the ones they own themselves personally. And they're reaching to those students and bringing them on board their companies. So this is a whole other level of that ingenious, we keep bragging about this power of the ingenious, the ingenious power of partnership, and here was a partnership we didn't anticipate. 
that our students were naturally connecting with other students to put together something they need. And I will tell you, if you're an employer, having students that know how to pivot and already work in teams and go seeking the expertise they need, we've just given them a leg, leg up whether their company succeeds or not. Well, ingenious power partnership. And we take that seriously. And so I want to make sure that I thank some of our partners that are here today. And I'll begin with Penn State trustee, Lynn Dietrich. Where are you? There. <laughs> and not only do you live here uh, locally, but I can tell you that the trustees at Penn State were all over this idea of Invent Penn State, incredibly supportive, and they basically signaled, you go for it. So thank you for being here and representing the Board of Trustees and a member of this community. We, we appreciate it a, a great deal. Um, I also want to extend our appreciation to our friends in local and state uh, government who have uh, been so supportive of Penn State and this initiative. Uh, Representative Paul Schemmel, thank you so much. We appreciate it a great deal. And we'll hear from you shortly and look forward to that. Also with us are Franklin County Commissioners Dave Keller, Bob Thomas, and Bob Ziobrowski. And I hope I said that right. <laughs> and Chambersburg Mayor Walter Beach. Thank you all for being here. Well, today's ribbon cutting for the Mount Alto Launchbox demonstrates the power of leveraging Penn State's research, knowledge, and entrepreneurial spirit. It has also used a $50,000 seed grant for which we award three years in a row, and then we're going to watch to see what happens uh, uh, next. Uh, that seed grant allowed these doors to be open and to create community programming and to run mine tank competition, which is based on that popular shark tank uh, format. Now, during lion tank, and it sounded like it was a lot of fun with so many people, uh, students, alumni, entrepreneurs delivered their pitches to a packed house, and the result was five viable and intriguing business ideas. Two of the competitors are with us here today, which is wonderful, and I'd like to make sure that I introduce them. The second place winner is Kyle Snowberger, a 2016 alumnus. Kyle's high altitude air launch orbital delivery vehicle would allow for affordable delivery of payloads in excess of 100,000 pounds to Earth's orbit. Kyle, if you wave and be recognized. <laughs> Something tells me you're going to do just fine. <laughs> Next, we have uh, Joanne Fiorenza who will be graduating this year. Joanne and another student, Hannah McIntyre, developed a health monitoring device for pets. It's cleverly called Shape Pup. Joanne, would you please wave and be recognized? <laughs> Both Kyle and Joanne have blue and white ribbons. Can't imagine why those colors are what was chosen on their name tags. And that's to encourage you to chat with them and talk with them about what their ideas are, learn more about their projects, and the, the fascinating lives that they're living these days and, and will live. We've seen the power of giving students outside the classroom engagement experience, and we want to ensure that all of our students have the opportunity for those transformative experiences. The Commonwealth campuses are incredibly important at Penn State. These are campuses closely connected their community. These are campuses that allow students to live close by, at home, save money on their way to a world-class education, which is Penn State. And that degree, one degree, is worth an incredible amount to the success of students. And so all of our campuses are one of the things that I'm most proud of. I shouldn't say this with Paul in the, in the house, but every time in the Capitol people say, how are your campuses doing? Because they're thinking about other campuses in the state that might be struggling a little bit. And each time I nod my head and say, we're doing just great. And that's because we are one community 
trying to promote the success of our students? Well, the Mount Alto Lunchbox is an outstanding way to provide transformative experiences for our students while impacting the region through economic development. And literally, we know from all sorts of data that if students are engaged in transformative experiences, they tend to stay in school, they tend to graduate, and they do tend to do better than their peers who aren't engaged in transformative experiences. In addition, we believe we can do even more for this area through partnerships and strategic investments that expand existing relationships with community leaders. And I tell people, I know this will be successful because we have the leaders of the community in the house. We have the elected officials that are making this as, as a commitment. So today, with this dedication, we envision a focused effort to generate innovative, commercially viable solutions to address emerging business needs in this region and behind. I want to thank you personally for all your efforts to uh, get this started. Your collaboration, support, and goodwill makes a huge amount of difference. And many thanks to your tireless staff that I know uh, have to keep track of all of the details and everything else and make us look good, right? Yeah, it's good. It's, it's wonderful. Well, I know this is only the beginning of great things for this region. I hope you'll take some of the activities afforded by this commitment. And now, I'm pleased to introduce our next speaker, Representative Paul Schemmel. Paul was elected in 2014 to represent the people of the 90th Legislative District. Paul serves on four House committees, Aging and Adult and Older Adult Services, Health, Judiciary, and Local Government. Throughout his career, he has been an active supporter of the community, and we're really pleased that you're here with us today. Please. Thank you, President Barron. Now, I didn't tell you earlier, I, I've been thinking about enrolling at Penn State, um, because last summer or fall, we had the opportunity as legislators to go up to main campus to take a tour of the food sciences. Uh, facility, see a lot of what happens there. And it was there that I learned about a class that a lot of students, maybe all, take called Ice Cream 101. <laughs> now, I've been working on the prerequisites for a number of years and feel that I'm qualified. Um, it was a fascinating opportunity to see firsthand what Penn State does and how they bring the power of the academy into the, into the community by seeing it. There was an example given by uh, the director there of, uh, it was an ice cream company somewhere that wanted to re-engineer their formula. I think there was a, an ingredient that was no longer fashionable, uh, and uh, they wanted to take it out to keep the, the flavor and so forth of their product. So through the power of the research facilities they have at Penn State, they were able to do that, to really benefit this Pennsylvania company. And I saw how benefits extended to so many things. So Penn State, 153 years ago, founded for the purpose of bringing agricultural science. So there are a lot of institutions prior to that that focused on the humanities. It's a philosophy major, I certainly appreciate that. But the practical nature of bringing the, the research power of science and the academy to, in this case, the farmers of the field. And interesting to me, the Morrill Acts, which were congressional acts, the first one passed in 1862. That was the beginning of the land grant system throughout the United States. Now, if you think about 1862, the forethought of those legislators. I think that there were a few things on their minds in 1862, aside from land-grant institutions. But that's when the first of the Morrill Acts passed, beginning the, the land-grant program that we have today. The Penn State was one of the first uh, to uh, then fold its program into that. The idea behind it was to bring science in agriculture and mechanics, or engineering, to the industry within the states. And that certainly happened with Penn State. And we've seen that. If you've been involved in the agricultural industry, you know about the extension services that are in every single county that bring the, the research power of the university to the farmer in the field, a very highly technical realm. And that has allowed our farmers in Pennsylvania to be very productive uh, you know, in everything that they do. We certainly see that as well in uh, a lot of the manufacturing facilities over the years and the benefits that that town and gown connection has had. So when we started this with Launchbox, and I, here I might make an aside, and I hate to bring up a human resources matter, but I have to, I have to tell you that, that your legislative director, uh, Mike Stefan, disappointed me a bit. And uh, when he told me that, I was sort of talking, we were talking earlier, having coffee, and it's explaining about this, and 
And he said, yeah, this is a great this is a great program. And this is the 21st one to open. And I thought we were the first. Totally burst my bubble. Uh, but what a phenomenal, what a phenomenal uh, model to follow. And uh, so glad to have it here in our community. And we think about the success that Penn State, as one of the world's foremost research facilities, has brought to our farming community, to our industrial community, and now to our entrepreneurs. And I think about what would California be without Silicon Valley? What would the state of Washington be without Microsoft? Oh, those were all startups. And uh, the kinds of startups that we, I'm sure, will see from these facilities that Penn State, through its forethought, is starting, is once again reinvigorating, I shouldn't say reinvigorating, but continuing that great tradition of what a land-grant university is there to be, which is to educate people, provide leaders for the future, and to enhance industry within those areas, those communities, the very communities we are. So I'm grateful that we're here. President Barron, thank you for your foresight. President or Chancellor Ashapong, thank you so much for the efforts that you've had in starting this program. We're delighted to have you here in Franklin County. And it's my pleasure to introduce Mike Ross from the Franklin County Area Development Corporation to talk a little bit more, I think, about the economic uh, impact that we'll have right here in Franklin County. So why am I not surprised that you were a philosophy major? <laughs> so, um, really. I'll I, think about that. <laughs> and I never knew you were witty. So, uh, so, uh, but anyway. So, anyway, President Barron, thank you for being here today and your whole team. And Mr. Barron, thank you for coming down here and, and, and to, to another beautiful April day here. Um, so, but let me talk a little bit about uh, where we are. Um, since our nation's founding, entrepreneurism has been the foundation of our economy. And if you know a small business owner, you know an entrepreneur, by the way. Uh, entrepreneurial development is a cornerstone of the FCABC's economic development strategy. We have a long-standing relationship with the Mon Alto campus and welcome the opportunity to avail a full range of resources in support of the Launchbox initiative. Today's event is a validation of the university's commitment to developing future generations of entrepreneurs capable of creating transformative change. Speaking to the transformative impact of entrepreneurism, simply look at those local entrepreneurs who transformed the Franklin County economy. We can start by going back to 1857, five years before the formation of Land Grant University, and the founding of T.B. Woods in Chambersburg. Having operated continuously for 161 years, it is one of the longest continuously operating manufacturing companies in the Commonwealth. How about George Frick, who founded Frick Thrashers in the 1860s, which is now part of Johnson Controls, a globally recognized company? Then there is John Grove, who was arguably the most impactful industrialist in the history of Franklin County. He created two companies, both of which are publicly traded, Grove Manufacturing, now part of Manitowoc, Manitowoc Company, and JLG Industries, now part of the Oshkosh Corporation. Each company has a global presence who, in the aggregate, employ more than 3,500 people within a 30-mile radius of where we are standing right now. Um, in addition, John invested in numerous other startup companies in his illustrious career. More recently, if you've ever seen a Brymar or Cam Superline trailer being towed to a construction site, the two companies were founded by local entrepreneurs, Brian Weiss and Marcus Plank for Brymar, Sandy Poffenberger, Lamar Lehman, and Bob Bentley with Cam Superline. Collectively, the two companies employed roughly 250 workers. Then there's Global Data Corporation, who provides IT support to companies throughout the mid-state and beyond, who has grown from the entrepreneurism of Greg Courtney to a fully integrated staff of more than 280. For those of you who might like the hospitality industry, our office helped to fund the startup of Roy Pitts Brewery for Ryan Richards and Jesse Roth, Kathy's Deli, who I think is serving today. Uh, for, uh, and Zoe's Chocolate in Waynesboro, which has provided chocolates for the Emmy Awards. Successful entrepreneurs are risk takers. That is where the launch box comes into play, as this is the place where budding entrepreneurs can access resources that will better ensure their success. I cannot overstate the importance of small business startups to the growth of our economy and the importance of this center. I commend President Barron and the Penn State Board of Trustees for their commitment to economic development and their emphasis on restoring Pennsylvania's entrepreneurial spirit. One of our partners in economic development is Ben Franklin 
technology partners, and, and I want to, I, I, they're Steve Bramley. I, Steve, I haven't seen you in a hundred years, but it's great that you haven't changed, man. So it's good to have you back. So, uh, good to see you, uh, Yes, uh, when, when Ben Franklin started, when, when we, I used to, remember I used to go to the to Middletown? Yeah, yeah. I hated that run. Uh, but, uh, but I would I'd like to introduce Richard Heddleson, who's uh, South Central Regional Director, to speak with about the partnership of Invent Penn State and Ben Franklin, and, and the Ben Franklin partnership in all seriousness has had a, a remarkable impact on entrepreneurial development throughout the Commonwealth, and we appreciate the relationship, so Richard, it is yours. Dr. Barron, Dr. F. Chung, uh, thank you for the opportunity to address the, you all today on behalf of Ben Franklin Technology Partners of Central and Northern Pennsylvania here at the dedication of the Montau to launch box. Ben Franklin is proud of its 35-year partnership with Penn State, assisting both startups and small manufacturers with the development of technology and products that create new jobs for Pennsylvanians in our 32 county service area. We assist companies through early stage investment services from our transformation services business network, such as bookkeeping, human resources, and market analysis, as well as entrepreneurial mentoring and strategic guidance. As an ongoing initiative of the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development, funded by the Ben Franklin Technology Development Authority, we invest not only in marketable innovations developed in our service area, many of which come to light from our <clears throat> annual Big Idea Contest, but also in the Ben Franklin Accelerators located throughout the service area and our e-marketing learning center. The advent of Invent Penn State brings new opportunities for us to assist student entrepreneurs in establishing their first enterprise, accelerating the transfer of technology that is the result of research by faculty at our many campuses to commercial use and increasing value for all by being more deeply involved with our local communities. This occurs not only in the innovation hubs such as the Monalto Lunchbox, but in the annual Penn State Venture and IP Conference, which will give over 80 companies access to over 50 well-qualified venture investors all at one time. One example of the success springing from the Lunchbox in Ben Franklin is a company called Foss Solutions, founded by then Penn State senior Hunter Swisher. Hunter had taken a plant nutrition class from Professor Jonathan Lynch, who described how the future of fertilizers was controlled release of nutrients based on plant demand, not on environmental conditions. This change would reduce runoff pollution into our waterways and provide much more efficient delivery of nutrients to plants. Hunter found that Penn State had three unlicensed patents on this technology, and in April of 2016, he founded Foss Pollutions and licensed those three patents from Penn State to begin development of what became the Rhizosorb product. This guy has a great talent for making names that are tongue twisters. <laughs> Over the summer, Hunter worked on the technology at the Penn State at the State College Lunchbox, supported by a summer founder grant. In the fall, he entered the Ben Franklin Tech Accelerator program and began making his first sales. In the fall of 2017, he won the Ben Franklin Big Idea Contest, and by the spring of 2018, Foss Pollution sales had grown to the size that they warranted an investment of $100,000 by Ben Franklin Technology Partners. We are looking forward to continued growth by this Launchbox graduate. While we have high hopes for Foss Pollutions, we recognize that there are always new hurdles for entrepreneurs to overcome. And though not every enterprise will realize commercial success, each will result in learning new things about our customers, their problems, and how to solve them profitably. And the launch box at Mont Alto 
is a place where that important learning will occur for faculty, for students, and for the community. Ben Franklin of Central and Northern Pennsylvania looks forward to working with them all to create successful enterprises. We will conclude this afternoon's events with closing remarks from Chancellor Atchum Pong. We hardly have a dull moment on the advisory board of Mike Ross. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Eric and Molly Barra, all of you, for being here today to help us launch the Monitor Launch Box. It is now my pleasure to invite Dr. Barron, Dr. Haynes, Dr. Sharkey, and our speakers, um, Paul, Mike, and Dick, to come up for the ribbon cutting. We have set up refreshments afterwards. You can see we had tents outside, but the weather didn't cooperate. But uh, if you feel like milling outside after you wrap something, it's not raining now, so you can, you know, kind of head into the tent if you just want to get some air. And if you haven't taken a tour already, I welcome you to do that after the ribbon cutting. Thank you very much. Are you ready? Okay, good. Here we go. <laughs> 